17x plus 2. If I divide this by absolute value of 51x plus 85, I know the, I know that the, the, the numerator is less than 87. So, but I'm dividing now by 51x plus 85. So how do I make this, this less than, this less than uh, inequality? How do I make this continued to be satisfied? Well, so how can I make, now I'm dividing by a number here. If I divide over here by a number that's smaller than this number, this will be satisfied. And have we got a number that's smaller than 51x plus 85? We do, it's 238, okay? 238, okay? So what we now know is that we're nearly there now with our conclusion, okay? We have this fact here encoded as this particular product divided by the absolute value that this is less than 87 over 238. But we know from our choice of delta being the minimum of these two things that this implies that one is less than 238 over 87 epsilon, which implies that 87 over 238 is less than epsilon. So actually, this is less than epsilon. So this is less than epsilon, which now, uh, this is transitivity, which now implies that x minus 4 times the absolute value of 17x plus 2, all over the absolute value of 51x plus 85, is in fact less than epsilon, which is what we wanted to, which is what we wanted to show was true, that if we take this particular premise, that we can derive this particular fact when delta is equal to when delta is equal to one. Now, we still have another choice of delta. Say if delta, say if one wasn't the minimum, 248 over 87 epsilon was the minimum. So let's choose that. Okay. So let's say, let's say for argument's sake, whoops, it's the same argument now. It's just a little bit easier. We're just we're just being exhaustive here and making sure that we get all possible values for delta. So let's say, let's say that delta equals 248 over 87 epsilon, okay, uh, is the min of the set of the choice between 1 and 248 over 87 epsilon. So let's say that's true, okay? And let's say, okay, that the absolute value of x minus 4, okay, let's say, oops, where's that gone to? The absolute value of x minus 4, which is our premise, Let's say that that actually is, in fact, less than this delta, 248 over 87 epsilon, okay? So what does this imply? Well, this implies, okay, that x minus 4 times uh, 17x, 17x plus 2, okay, must be less than 22887ths, okay, times epsilon, okay? We know that this is true. So when I multiply this by a number to keep the inequality, okay, I need to make sure that I multiply this by a bigger number than 17x plus two. And we know what that bigger number is. That bigger number is in fact, where's it gone to? What's bigger than 17x plus two is 87. So if I multiply this by 87, this now holds, which implies that x minus four times 17x plus two I'm really saying when I say x minus 4, I mean the absolute value of it, is less than, well, the 87s cancel, 228 epsilons. Okay? Now what we're going to do is this, is that we're going to take x minus 4 times 17x plus 2, which we know is less than 228 epsilon, and I'm going to divide it by, I'm going to divide it by 51, the absolute value of 51x plus 85 and once again, to make this inequality hold, I need to divide over here by a smaller number than this number here. Now, we know a number that's smaller than this number. It's 248. And voila, there we go. We end up with, we end up with uh, the absolute value of x minus 4 times the absolute value of 70 and x plus 2 all over the absolute value of 51x plus 85 is, in fact, less than epsilon uh, from our choice of delta to be this particular min here. Okay? And that's as required. So we've actually shown that we can deduce under two conditions when epsilon, when delta is equal to one. Excuse me, my headphones are, are bouncing on my head here. So when delta is equal to one, we've deduced, well, when delta was equal to one, we, did, we deduced from this particular premise, this particular conclusion in this form here. Okay? When delta was equal to one, we got what we wanted. And then when we chose delta to be the possible other minimum value, which is 28.87 of epsilon. Oops, my headphones pop them off my head there. Uh, 
And when we start with the premise again, what we've deduced from that is once again the conclusion. Right? Okay, guys, uh, once again, this is Jonathan Lambert uh, with uh, Maths and Stats. And this video, uh, another video in our series, a little bit more complicated, only from the fact that the, that the rational function has a lot more work involved and numbers are a little bit messy. We could have tidied things up here. Like, for example, there's, I suppose, uh, there, there, there is a little bit more probably commonality in there. We probably could have done a little bit more tidying up. Uh, we could have probably taken take the 17 out here as, a, as an absolute value and carried that across, which would have meant that the numbers wouldn't have been as crazy that we're dealing with here. But once again, uh, this is John Lambert with Maths and Stats. This was another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus and limits, and in particular, epsilon delta proofs. And I hope that this proof was in some way intuitive, and more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.